Imagine this. You've attended countless workshops, read numerous books, and practiced countless communication techniques, right? All in the hopes of improving your marriage. Yet, despite all of your efforts, you still find yourself stuck in the same frustrating cycle that, you know, misunderstandings and arguments and just the same old, same old results. Sounds familiar? Now, here's what happened. If you are experiencing and have experienced any of that, I want to say this right up front, and that is you're not alone. And I'm saying this from a place of having worked with hundreds of couples, and I can tell you this is a recurring theme. I hear it so often, more than you would have ever imagined. So you're not alone in this, and that's why today we are going to dive into the surprising truth that could change the way you approach communication in your marriage, right? In your relationship. So I want you to stay tuned to uncover the missing link, right? The missing link no one is telling you about and you won't find anywhere else. And that's why we've entitled this episode, The Surprising Truth About Why Communication Alone Isn't Saving Marriages. Stay tuned. And welcome to the Happier Marriage Podcast, a podcast for spouses longing to have a happier marriage so they can feel more connected, desired, and supported. Now, to start the show, here is your host, and Sherpa, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified relationship coach, Kingsley Grant. Now, now that we've set the stage, I think it's important to list some of the most commonly taught communication skills as a backdrop to where we're headed. I think it's important because we hear the term so often mentioned, you know, communication skills, effective communication skills, and we have an idea of what that might mean. But sometimes I believe that there's a, a, you know, we hear many times active listening, we hear body language, but there are others that are taught regularly. And I'm sure you, if you've been trying to work on this and have applied, um, try to use this in your marriage, you know what I'm talking about, right? So it will serve as a backdrop to this episode. So I want to preface though, by saying that you, what you want to hear in this episode from me is that I'm against these skills because I do teach them myself and have done so for almost two decades. I mean, I do know that they work. I practice them myself in my marriage of, as of this recording, 38 years. So it's not like I'm going to say, you know, I'm downing on uh, these communication skills as if they're, you know, they're not effective. No, they are. They are. But I will kind of unpack it and tell you why I believe in and of themselves, they're not enough. So here are some of the skills that you might have been, fam- you're familiar with and may have heard, and you may have tried yourself, right? For example, conflict resolution skills, active listening, assertiveness, nonverbal communication, empathy, Here's one you may not hear too often, but this is very important. And this is more in um, it's in, um, emotional intelligence, which I think is so important, is emotional regulation, emotional regulation. I could go down a rabbit trail and teach on this because I think it's so, so important. But again, it's not the purpose of this episode. You may have also been taught and heard about clarification, sorry, clarification and summarization, right? I mean, reflective listening and to summarize what you've heard back to the person that's talking. What about problem solving skills, feedback, negotiation? These are just some of the most common ones that you may have heard and read up about, and maybe you have practiced yourself. But the question is, 
why is it then that if this was in of itself the way to truly experience satisfying marriages and relationships, why is it there are so many people, and maybe including yourself, are still not experiencing that satisfied outcome, results? So again, I want to re- reiterate that there are nothing wrong, right? There's nothing wrong with teaching and applying these skills, right? But what I found as I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of couples over the years is that something is missing. Something else is needed. And that is what we're going to unpack right after this. So the big question is this. How is it possible that you have a happier marriage when... You feel like you've tried everything. Your spouse isn't making an effort. You're exhausted. You feel like giving up. Or there's so much hurt that's taken place between you and your spouse. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. Okay, let's dive into our first point, and that is the illusion of effective communication. I've entitled it the illusion of effective communication. Communication. Now, by the very fact that you hear me use the word illusion, it simply says that somehow people have bought into this idea that effective communication or practicing effective communication skills seems to be the be all and end all, right? Be, be all and end all. But I believe that it's not the be all and end all, right? Meaning, it's not the only important thing in working through issues in your marriage. Again, like if it was, then more people would have more satisfying marriages, as I've said before. So it's like the emphasis then becomes that this is what you need and the only thing you need. And that's why I say it's an illusion, right? It's almost like I would say it's overrated. It's almost like everyone is saying you've got to be better at your communication skills. And how frustrating that must be for you if you have tried it. And, you know, it's not for a lack of trying. You may have gone to to counseling or had received coaching. You bought the latest and most improved, you know, uh, maybe a book or audio book or listened a podcast like this one, and you've been told over and over again, it's almost like you become at ad nauseum. You know, you're you've, you've been like nauseated because you've heard it so much. And what's so frustrating is that you've tried it, and you feel like what they're simply saying is that you are not doing it good enough. You're not, you know, um, maybe it's you, right? <laughs> and yes, of course, I believe this a part of that is true. There could be. Um, a delivery aspect to it because you may have all the skills, but then it's how you deliver it that makes a big difference, right? For example, you um have may have all the 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 tools in your tool bag about something you're going to repair. You know, I recently had my roof replaced on my house, and when I look at how these people were so skilled, they have all the tools. I'm looking at men; they have some of the tools they have. I have as well, hammer, nails, um, they have the, you know, um, you know, all these different tools, as you can imagine. I have some of those tools, not all of it, but some. But can you imagine me going on the roof and trying to replace that? What a disaster that would be, right? It would be a disaster. And, you know, I'm, I'm just telling you straight up, it would be a disaster. Again, I have a lot of tools in my house. And I do know some things about mechanic, mechanical things on cars. So can you imagine me now trying to, because I, know, I have some tools, taking out a car engine and taking it apart and putting it back together? I, that car would be ruined forever, right? And you may be also, it's true of you as well. So having the tools alone is not enough. So you may have all these skills, but it's not enough. So when I do say it could be part of the delivery, that could be a part of it as well. But there's something much more important that I want to unpack in this episode that I believe is is really one of the most important things to have. So if it was mastering those skills alone, 
um, you would not be still finding yourself facing the barriers and the and the the frustration in your marriages, right? So here's what I love what the scripture says in Proverbs 18, verse 2. It says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Let me say right up front, it's not calling you a fool or your partner, right? It's not saying that you are, but what Solomon is saying, that when someone takes, um, have more uh, focus on expressing their opinion, and they do not take pleasure in trying to be more understanding, then he says, that's a foolish move. And only fools do that kind of thing, right? So it is where an illusion comes into place. And that's why I use the word illusion of of, um, effective communication. Because what happened is when someone is all about having to be heard, Right, I think someone have said, um, if I can remember it, uh, about is not do not seek to be understood, but seek to understand. Uh, right, seek first to understand, then to be understood. I think that was Stephen Covey who said that. You can correct me on that if you know otherwise. But I think it was Stephen Covey, the late Stephen Covey, who said, seek um, first to understand, then to be understood. And that's why Solomon is also saying here. I think. Stephen Colvin may have some, an, an idea, an insight, and listen to S- Solomon himself. But Solomon says, a fool takes no pleasure, right? He or she is taking, have no pleasure in understanding. They, they do not want to go to understanding. What they're only focused on is expressing their own opinion. And Solomon says, if that's for you, then you're a fool. Now, again, I'm only quoting Solomon, right, in Proverbs 18, verse 2. So this is very fitting in why I say, it's an illusion about effective communication. Now, now that we have shattered the illusion, I believe, of effective communication, uh, I want us to turn our attention to the next crucial piece, and that is how we're going to explore the missing piece, exploring the missing piece. Now, have you ever tried building a puzzle, uh, a game, and you you get to the end of building that game, that piece, and when you get there, you find that one piece of the puzzle is missing. Have that ever happened to you? How frustrating that is. I remember that's happened to me uh, more than one times. And, you know, I no longer do puzzles, not because it's nothing anything wrong with it. I think it's really fun. Um, I would still do that if I had some time. And maybe, you know, as I'm talking this through, maybe I should find some time to at least use that as a weekend thing to build a puzzle, get a gigantic puzzle and build that out with my wife and just have fun. You know, it's something that's different and maybe it's relaxing, it's therapeutic. And so as I'm talking about this, maybe I need to um, go, get back to building a puzzle. And so I'll, I'll update you on that. If I do, I'll let you know how that went. But I know I've built puzzles in the past. And for some reason, I get to the end of that and that, piece, a piece is missing. And you know what happens then, right? It's frustrating. So you're turning everything upside down as I did, trying to find that one piece. And then it's frustrating that you can't find it. And now you have an unfinished puzzle, right? You search to no avail and can't find that puzzle. And and so it is with um, using all that you've learned in effective communication skills, it at the end, it is evident that that piece, something is missing. And that's why I believe it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. So I love again what the scripture says in Ephesians 4 verse 2. Um, Paul writing says this, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Now, Paul is writing here about how do we communicate. And so he places the emphasis someplace that you don't hear too often in what you receive based upon all that's out there, right? But Paul begins by saying this, be completely humble and gentle, right? Be patient, bearing with one another in love. So really, Paul is saying that 
the secret sauce of how we communicate to have a satisfying outcome is not just found in the communication skills that we've been taught. He says, think of humility as the secret sauce that gives the flavor to your conversations. So without it, you're just dishing out bland communication. There's no flavor to it. I don't know, I don't know about you, but there's something I I kind of detest, and that is eating flavorless food. You know, several years ago, this is many, many years ago, so even the family who had invited us to dinner, I don't even think they're alive today because I haven't heard from them, heard about them, and it's been years. So it was in the early years of my, uh, my, my, my marriage with my wife. Actually, we never even had kids at the time. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we had kids at the time. So that's, you know, some you know, to tell you, um, my oldest son is is 30, what, 34 years old there now. So it's, it's beyond that. And I remember that we were invited to dinner. A couple, you know, a nice couple, they decided to invite my wife and I to dinner. So we went over there and we, you know, had small talk and we were there to sit in down and, and then they, you know, brought this dinner out of the, the microwave. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe they only warmed up the dinner, the food in the microwave, but it seemed to me the way that I it tasted that they actually may have cooked that food in the microwave. It was such a, a bland tasting chicken. My wife and I look at each other and thinking, what is this? You know, we're from Jamaica, so we are from the islands. We love spicy food or real seasoned food. And if you are from the island, you know what I'm talking about. We don't like to eat bland food. And so I remember that we the chicken was white as it went in. You know, there's no, the color of it was just white. And, um, and, and it tasted as if, as it looked, very bland. No seasoning sprinkled on that thing. We did our best. We did our best to to tolerate and try to, to eat us, eat the food because we were, you know, we didn't want to somehow, you know, uh, somehow reflect anything about um, us not being grateful. We were very grateful because, again, it was the early years of our marriage. It was another couple who was trying to build relationships, but I guess, obviously, they were not good at cooking. So it was very bland and it had no flavor to it. And so it's like that in communication. It can be like that chicken. It's so bland that even... The, the person that you're trying to serve this to, see it that way and have it has no taste, right? And so you're dishing out many times with, with as, as well intended as you are, um, dishing out many times what's just called bland communication, right? There's no flavor to it. And that's why humility becomes that secret sauce that gives flavor. So even with what it is you do know and have read and have heard and paid for, this is a part that no one is telling you about. This is a part that is missing. This is a part that comes with another kind of communication. And that's why I've coined the phrase godly communication, right? Godly communication. Now you say, well, Kingsley, you, you may, you know, what about if someone doesn't, are not, is not into God and is not into wanting to, you know, somehow submit to his way of teaching us about how to communicate? Well, Here's what I, I say to that. Well, apparently, um, you may have just to you may have to just do, or that person, let's say that person, may have to continue to work harder at practicing what they have been taught as effective communication skills, and probably get the same results and get more of the same. You know, it was um, we've heard a phrase right that says uh, to do the same thing over and over and ever over again, expecting to get the same result is called insanity. So if that person may want to do that. Uh, be my guest. I, I really can't help someone who believes that to do more of the same thing, they're going to get a different result. And that's why I want to propose this idea of godly communication. Again, it's for those who want a different result. It's for those who are saying there's got to be something missing. There's that one piece of the puzzle that's missing. And I'm trying to say, hey, that's it. It's over there. Again, if you, it's up to you whether or not you want to put that piece in and finish what you're working on or keep it that way. That's what, that's what I say. I say that with all kindness and love, but I just can't help that person who wants to do more of the same and expect to get um, different results. So now that we've discovered what the real missing piece is, right? I want us then to reveal the true hero 
<laughs> which you may have heard me alluded to, and that's being humble. This is, a, I believe, is the key, the most effective piece of what it is when it comes to communication. So it's not so much about the tactical things, which is important, right? The skills we have mentioned earlier is important. But what is missing is the the heart, the, the issue of the heart. The issue of the heart has to be factored in. It's the most important aspect to get the results that is going to create a better relationship. So humility is like the secret ingredient that makes your conversation richer, right? Your conversation is richer. It's like that, again, going back to my chicken example, the secret ingredient that would make that chicken tastier is if they had just applied some of our Caribbean, um, you know, seasoning, you know, the sauce, the, the, the pepper, the salt, the, um, you, you name it, you know, all the different things that goes into that would be so great, right? And have it browned and just, you know, tasting very, very rich and all that stuff, right? So that's the secret sauce here. It's humility. It's like adding a special flavor that makes everything better, right? It makes everything better. It makes that chicken taste better. C.S. Lewis, he puts it this way. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Again, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. So that is where humility comes into play. So imagine humility as a thing that turn that turns talking troubles into moments of real understanding. And when you have moments of real understanding, you have moments of more satisfaction. You have more encouragement to do more of the difficult conversation moments. Because again, you're approaching it with what's important, and that is humility. A humility is a godly communication skill, right? Um, you know, I love what the Bible said in James, the book of James says, God, um, he, he exalts the humble, right? He exalts the humble, but he puts down the prideful. So God is against, against the pride, pride in itself, as far as being have a proud um, approach. Again, what Solomon, um, Solomon says, you know, is, is pride that seek to want you to understand them, but they don't want to understand you. It's almost a one. It's almost a one-way street. That's what pride does, and God resists the proud. The Bible says God resists the proud. He resists the proud because He knows the damage that does. I mean, we go back to the, in the Old Testament, Satan in heaven. Whether they believe in Him or not, it's beside the point. It's, I believe in it because God said it, and even Jesus in teach about Satan. So I believe that you know it's a real. He's a real thing, a real human, not human being, a real entity. And uh, many people will be deceived, are being deceived by him. And one day will wake up and realize that, look at who deceived them. Um, and they'll be so, you know, surprised. I hope you're not being deceived by him to believe he doesn't exist. So Satan is a real um, entity. And so what happened is that even in the Old Testament, we find where many times it's this idea of pride uh, is showing up. Because even in the very beginning of time, Satan was the one who deceived um, Adam and Eve, or actually Eve first, and then she to Adam. But he used pride. Is he causes them to think better that they know better than God, and so we know the re- end result of that. So humility is key for us to be able to have better conversation, better communication, better outcomes. So if you're going to want to have um, more satisfying outcome and managing more. Uh, difficult conversations in your relationship, in your marriage, then my friend, it has to be a hard preparation. You know, you may have listened to my last episode. I hope you did. But I talk about the most important aspect. I thought there's four approaches to um, to talking about difficult conversations or having difficult conversations and not be afraid of that. Because I believe that many people do not enter, many couples do not enter into difficult conversations because it's so nerve wracking, right? Especially when you know you've been there and done that, and what well, the consequences of that. You've, you're, you're maybe even today, you don't even want to bring it up, and it's causing a rift in your marriage, in your relationship, and you know it because there's an unfinished business. You don't have a chance to bring up these tough conversations, and this is why I believe on 
on the heel of the, my last episode, this one is so important because this is now beginning to talk about what the first piece in my last episode talked about because we talked about the, um, how uh, the first important aspect is setting, I mean, the stage, right? It's setting the, the stage, it's sta- I'm sorry, staging the conversation, staging the conversation. And part of sta- staging the conversation is this right here. Is this right here? It's preparing the heart. It has to be a heart preparation. And the heart must be prepared if you're going to have a different outcome in your relationship, right? So as we're kind of um, talking about these three things, we describe the illusion of um, a communication, right? Exploring the missing piece. And then we now have revealed uh, the, the solution, the, the solution. So as you've listened to this, and you're tracking with me, I wonder what's going to your mind right now, what's going to your heart. I would love to hear. I mean, and this is one of those ways we can have this com- uh, conversation continues is if you let me know through a question, you can just direct message me on Instagram, right? And if you see this uh, this post and any um, of the social media platforms, you can engage, engage. I mean, we're having a great conversation right now as of this recording on my Facebook profile. If you're not following me there and also on my YouTube channel, Kings the Grant, make sure you're following me because we are engaged in some of these conversations that could be helpful to you. I want to encourage you to to join me and join those who are already involved in that. So while effective communication is vital, right, without humility, it's like a, a ship that's drifting, just drifting and lacking direction. So again, it's not about mastering communication techniques, right? It's about mastering the art of humility, right? It's about mastering the art of humility. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to join me into um, igniting a humility revolution, a humility revolution, because I believe it's important in our relationships. It's going to cause us to have more um, more satisfying marriages, satisfying relationships, and talk about issues that may be difficult because we have um, wrapped everything around in humility. So I'd love to hear you share your aha moments, right? Um, as you listen to this episode. And again, don't forget to subscribe on, on um, Spotify and or on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to the, the channel and leave a review. I would really appreciate that. And make sure you follow me on my YouTube channel. I really look forward to having you there. So, so until next time, I want you to keep humility at the forefront and watch and see how your communication flourish, how your marriage flourish, and how you feel more encouraged to have deeper conversations, right? So stay tuned for more eye-opening discussions and conversations here on the Happy Marriage Secrets Podcast. And let's, uh, here now is our announcer who will close out this episode. God bless. We've come to the end of another exciting show. And if you enjoyed this podcast, one, make sure you give this show a rating and review. Two, subscribe to the show to get all new releases. And three, get your complimentary copy of the Five Secrets to a Happier Marriage ebook at kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. Again, it's kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. See the link in the show notes. Do it today. Don't delay. Thanks so much for listening and make sure you tell one other spouse about this show or better yet, share it with them. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you his peace both now and forever.